1994-1995 Rotary Mitch. theme, Be a Friend. <laughs> President Mitch's year started with a 10-day trip to Taipei, China. Good sport and equally uh, dedicated six months pregnant wife Lisa braved this extensive journey to the site of the International Convention. <laughs> Mitch's banner year ended with Monarch Beach Sunrise Rotary Club earning the cherished District Governor's Trophy and being recognized as the best club in District 5320. Seven first place awards were also received ranging from community service to international service. For the first time in the history of Rotary, the Rotary International Board of Directors, led by International President Bill Huntley, joined the members of Monarch Beach Sunrise Rotary at our regular Wednesday morning meeting. The club also has hosted numerous district governor-elects for home hospitality. Nelson Mandela became the first black African president. We didn't have a joke for this, we just thought it was a really cool fact. <laughs> Some of you may not know this, but Mitch's real name is John Mitchell Jackson. Now, he may consider this hitting a bit below the bell, but John Mitchell, did you know that during your year as president, Lorena Bobbitt was found not guilty by reason of insanity for having mutilated her husband John's private parts? And in Mitch's term, the North American Free Trade Agreement went into effect about the same time in the Jackson household the No Free Ride Agreement went into effect after Mitch tried to claim presidential immunity from household chores. <laughs> Bravo. Okay, my turn. Terry Rifkin, 1995-1996. Rotary, yes. Rotary International theme. I loved it. Act with integrity, serve with love, and work for peace. Being a Rotarian for 25 years has been one of the most meaningful experiences of my life and serving as president has been indeed an honor. I was very fortunate to meet my husband Chris in Rotary in 1987. We were both charter members at the time. Now I don't want any of you young and single members to think that this is the next match.com. <laughs> Rotary in no way is a really a breeding ground for loving couples. However, I just got very... I just got very lucky. No, well, wait. You already were together before you came to Rotary. I found my guy here. In fact, there have been several couples who have served together in our club. Nan and Rod Eide, yeah. Mitch Jackson, Lisa Wilson, Ooh. Neil Burns and Martha Hoffman, yeah. and now Gary Maxwell and Michael Truelove Maxwell. Yeah. I guess it's not such bad glue to have passion for service and share the same ideals and values with the one you love. During my term of office, I began with a rendezvous in Nice, France, where 34,000 Rotarians and guests gathered at the International Convention for memories I'll never forget. I hosted a dinner at my home for all of the past presidents, as well as my president-elect, Ted Bowersox, and wisely tapped into their expertise and vision for the club. I presided over the first of eight comedy nights for kids' charity fundraisers. I delegated my friend and president-elect Ted Bowersox to create the first ever MBSR club brochure and songbook. Proudly during my term, a new and enduring service project began the Community College Scholarship Program. This project pairs Rotarian mentors with deserving high school graduates who have been granted a two-year scholarship, and it is still, of course, functioning to today, significantly uh, contributing over $15,000 annually. During his murder trial, O.J. Simpson put on a <laughs> pair of gloves that were found soaked with blood at the murder scene. The gloves appeared not to fit, prompting defense attorney Jock Johnny Cochran to remark, if the gloves don't fit, you must acquit. During the trials and tribulations of Terry's term as president, Terry showed up with her own set of gloves, boxing gloves that is, <laughs> ready to take on all comers in an effort to fight for rotary perfection. Monarch Beach Sunrise first and last co-ed softball team made its appearance in the OC Pitching for Perfection Terry scheduled practice for 3.22 a.m. to 6.18 p.m. Monday through Friday with double practices on Saturday and Sunday. It was rumored that Terry's rigorous practice schedule and not the team's win-loss record may have contributed to the team's ultimate demise. <laughs> Bower Sox, 1996-1997, Rotary International theme, Build the Future with Action and Vision. 
President Ted launched the year with a beach party inside the Ritz-Carlton, featuring the Beach Boys and the California Raisins and their rendition of I Heard It Through the Grapevine. A marketing mastermind, his mission statement for the club set the tone. We plan to build the future with action and vision. He planned to substantially increase membership while positively impacting lives, both young and old, locally and internationally, while fostering great fellowship with the friendships within our Rotary Club. Three new annual projects were begun. The Adopt a Social Worker program, where we paired up with the County of Orange Social Worker to assist with 911 needs for the poor. We also became involved with the Fran Joswick, now the Shea Therapeutic Writing Center, where equine therapy takes place for disabled children and adults. And lastly, an annual fishing trip with needy youth was developed. Two of these worthwhile projects are still on our schedule every year for MBSR hands-on service projects and charitable dollars. As Ted's year began, the worst blizzard in American history hit the eastern states. While on the West Coast, Ted blew into town with his own historical storm of new ideas. <laughs> Dolly the sheep was claimed to be the first mammal to be successfully <laughs> cloned from an adult cell. However, on the West Coast, only the privileged few knew that Ted Bowersox was quietly grooming his own little clone, Ted Jr., to take over the world. <laughs> Unless you not feel quite old enough this morning, Ted, let me remind you that during your year, the 1991 film, Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man, starring Mickey Rourke and Don Johnson, took place during your presidency. <laughs> Who knew? Bonnie Myers, 1997-1998, show Rotary Cares. Presidential Bonnie returned home from the International Convention in Glasgow, Scotland. Believe me, we saw all the, the slides to prove it. Yes. <laughs> Bonnie was fired with enthusiasm for the challenge of drafting and adopting a brand new set of club bylaws, the first of its kind policies and policies and procedures. The 10th anniversary of the club's chartering was celebrated. Who could forget the infamous, where in the world are we? On a weekly basis, Bonnie gave us a rotary meeting about what service projects and rotary happenings were going on globally. A unique series of panel discussions in support of Rotary's four-way test and ethical practices were conducted. The annual Senior Citizens Thanksgiving dinner began, and the collective efforts of Monarch Beach Sunrise Rotary earned its number of impressive awards and distinguished Best Club in District 5320. Ah, Bonnie, so many jokes in so little time. <laughs> the rest of you may be interested to know that it was Bonnie who ordered Terry and me to come up with these little tidbits of trivia about each of you in your respective years. With that in mind, please forward any complaints regarding this presentation <laughs> to Bonnie at Bonnie and Her Great Ideas at RotaryManiac.com. <laughs> many of you may remember this time frame as the year of the crash. Princess Diana died in a horrible car crash in Paris. And many of you may recall the October 27 stock market crash. Nevertheless, Bonnie, as the eternal optimist, we're sure she'll be happy to remember that it wasn't all sadness in her world during her year as president. The hot new TV series Teletubbies premiered to rave reviews from happy toddlers everywhere. While Bonnie tuned up the club's bylaws, another tune-up at another galaxy took place as astronauts from the Space Shuttle Discovery began their repair work on the Hubble Space Telescope. Lisa Wilson, 1998-1999, follow your rotary dreams. The wit of President Lisa entertained our club, as you can see, uh, throughout the following year. Members laughed all the way to the bank. Under her persuasion, the club sold out two primary fundraisers, golf tournament and comedy night, enabling the club to expand its list of beneficiaries and $5,000 to a donation to Polio Plus campaign. That was the largest to date. Total funds during the year hit a record $106,000. An important and ongoing recognition. New but seasoned member Daryl Cavanaugh brought a stellar program from the state of Texas. Yeah. Student of the Month program was established with Dana Hills High School, planting the seed for a future Interact Club. President Lisa encouraged the club to really spread its international wings philanthropically, supporting projects from Tijuana to El Salvador and Nepal. My year was really all rainbows and perfection, so I don't have anything else to add to that. Oh. Oh. Bravo! Bravo! It really is blank there. I would have filled that in. Okay. I didn't know. Don Gonneville, 1999 to 2000. 
act with consistency, credibility, and continuity. President Don blew on his train whistle, remember? Woo, woo! At his first meeting held at the San Juan Capistrano train station, and he invited all members to get on board the Rotary Train of Service. Monarch Beach Sunrise continued to work on membership recruitment, more effective fundraising, and project development. During President Don's year, the club adopted a Mesteco Indian tribe in Tijuana, and thanks to several members, the club provided support on numerous occasions with construction work on dilapidated school buildings, clothing drives, and food collections. Ah, it was the year the world's population hit six billion. It was rumored that this final push over a paltry 5.99 billion was somehow related to Don and his extensive travel schedule. <laughs> no evidence was ever presented to confirm or deny that rumor. On the serious side, it was the year of Columbine. On the lighter side, it was the year Lance Armstrong won his first tour to France, which we now know should be considered on the dark side. <laughs> Later that year, NASA lost radio contact with Mars polar landing, moments before the spacecraft entered the Martian atmosphere. It is believed that was the incredibly, it was the incredibly loud, ear-piercing shriek of Don's train whistle that reestablished that connection to the Mars lander, while concurrently causing partial deafness and extreme irritation at our local Rotary meetings. <laughs> while trying to circumnavigate the world in a hot air balloon, Colin Prescott and Andy Elson set a new endurance record after being in a hot air balloon for 233 hours and 55 minutes. After a year of listening to Dawn's train whistle, we feel like we beat that record of endurance. <laughs>